Somebody wants to roll with Tariq, fine. I'll take over the street. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is the episode nine trailer breakdown that only we do on this channel so well. And we got a whole lot to cover that we can try to pick apart in this trailer. We've got Kane teaming up with Little Guap, who looked like Jimmy Uso of the Uso Brothers on WWE. I don't know what to call Kane. Kane the Klutz, Klutzy Kane. That team up is going to wind up being the quickest gangsters to get thrown in jail, ladies and gentlemen. But we'll follow the story because there are a lot of clues in this trailer. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you all get them. For whatever the reason, YouTube has been turning off videos. People that started with me way back in the day didn't even know I'm still doing videos are just now finding me again, so turn them on. Follow me on Instagram. That is a way to permanently stay connected with me and not get lost. Let's watch the rest of the trailer, and then we're going to pick it apart. This field is hot right now, thanks to King. You don't say that name anymore. I'm just saying, I think we should wait until our eyes are off of us. The fact is that a gangbanger was murdered by a killer skilled enough to make it look like an accident. You need to slow down. I'm not a monster, I swear. You are a monster. The sooner you accept it, the better off you'll be. Very first scene, we see Kane with some new boo. So I guess he done kicked the hood rat girl to the curb. The one they kept knocking on her door. She catching attitude with everybody. He's in there with some new boo who looked bougie as hell. Talking to someone. Who is he talking to? Little Guap? Uh, I don't see Little Guap being in that situation. Some other supplier? It'll be interesting to see who he's talking to. And they flash to a scene of Tariq because whomever he's talking to, he's basically saying Monet has done kicked me the mama's boy to the curb for a new mama's boy in Tariq who's smarter. And then they cut to a clip where you see Kane cutting up bodies. Everybody's dead. It's like six, seven bodies over here, man. Then he got on the bloody shirt. Then he turns around. He's throwing them in barrels. And you see him chopping them up, putting them in barrels, man. Who is he taking out? Maybe he's taking out the competition. Maybe he's taking out somebody on another street that little Glock and his crew was selling on. Then they cut to Tariq talking to Monet. Basically, he got all the new supply, and Reek is being smart. He's telling Monet, look, we need to chill out right now. The streets is hot because Kane is killing everybody. <laughs> Monet looks at him and is like, bro, don't you say that name around me. Now, you know she's probably going through all kinds of emotions. She's distraught that she's had to disavow her son. Um, she done put Tariq in place of Kane, and she knows that Kane knows the inner workings of the organization, and I think in the back of her mind, she knows that at some point in time, it's going to come to, we're going to have to take him out before he eventually takes us out. And then they cut to Drew looking like, man, this is my brother. I don't know whose side to be on. And they show y'all sitting there with all the drugs, Monet, Tariq, and um, Drew. Then they cut to this young lady. Now, my wife messed around and changed her name. First, y'all was picking on Carrie about being lock and key Carrie, doorknob Carrie. Now, last night, my wife gets on this YouTube and calls her conjugal Carrie as if anytime somebody comes to a prison, they're going to get a turn with her. I do not want to hear from you people calling this woman lock and key Carrie or conjugal Carrie. She is a professor, an educator, a woman who's had to endure. And right now, she's doing the same thing Professor Jabari did, which is she's investigating what's going on with Zeke. After that incident where she met Monet, she started thinking, oh, what the hell am I getting into? So now she's looking at Zeke and seeing um, Tahada go to jail. She sees Monet in the picture, and she's flashing to a scene where she's on her computer the same way Jabari was on his computer investigating Tariq. Now, the, this is interesting because will these two somehow or another come together to take on Tariq and Zeke? And will it happen? Maybe Jabari and Carrie decide, you know what, we better be Professor Avengers and try to save our bacon from this drug cartel that's going on. Interesting. Then next we see my boy Lies, uh, Alonzo, whatever his name, Lies Alonzo, whatever his name is. I know him as Mother's Milk on The Boys. Love this brother. Great actor. 
apparently he's a lawyer for the school because he's talking to one of the deans or somebody, maybe even Stearns, that people are getting killed gangsters. High level gangsters getting killed and he's got to be talking about Kane. Um, who else would be out there on the streets tearing up everybody? We know it's not too bit, and they already showed in this trailer Kane is just dismantling dudes. But would Power throw in somebody else that's doing some mess on the streets? Of course they would. They love the drama. And then they show Tariq waking up, looking groggy, looking sad as hell. He gets a text message from 2-Bit, and I've told y'all since last season, these two are going to at some point in time team up and be 22-Bit. You're seeing the foundation of that right now. 2-Bit text him like, bro, I need my 50K for saving your ASS. And do y'all really think 2-Bit is going to give up on that cash cow after he's got his money? Hell no. He wants to take care of Spanky's mama. He wants to take care of himself. And you see Tariq is slamming his phone down to the ground in disgust. He calls his mama, lets his mama know I'm in some trouble. And the mama's basically saying, Tariq, whatever the hell you into, get your butt out of it. You don't have to be in it. And then we see Tariq creeping somewhere on the white door, and he's pulling out his gun. And we know Tariq is not opposed to using his gun. He can't fight like his daddy, but he'll shoot you in the face like his daddy did. And then this is Tariq's master plan right here. He is going to have to use Effie to make this extra money. And I don't know if he went to Yale where Effie's going to school at and be like, look, you know, I'm sorry, yada, yada, yada. Let me beat your brains out again and then we can get back on the straight and narrow. But he's going to have to do something because he needs some money. Then they show a bag of money and they show a hand. I'm not sure if that's Tariq's hand, Effie's hand, Trace's hand, Braden's hand. Because in the very next clip, they show Braden. And if you look at the hand who's throwing down those drugs, and those look like the drugs from the app that they're using, course correction, it's a white hand throwing those drugs down. Who could this person be? My best guess, this is the co-creator of course correction, Stearns' husband, who's throwing the drugs down because Braden done left Tariq. Braden said, F you, Tariq, I'm done with you. And that is clearly a white hand. So is that possibly Stearns' lover, husband, or could that be Brayden's brother, Trace? And it could be the drugs that, some of the drugs that Trace stole from Tariq in the beginning. Leave me comments on who you think that is. Then we go back to somebody sticking up the Tejada family. You see somebody's got a gun, and ladies and gentlemen, if you take a good look at those fingernails, right there to the left of Drew, that is a woman. I don't know too many men who would have their nails looking like that. That is a woman sticking up the Tejada family. And Diana's looking like, man, I can't believe this. Who is that woman, ladies and gentlemen, that is sticking up Drew and Diana? Take a good look at that hand. Then they cut to Monet looking like, ah, oh, man, what the hell? Then we see Tariq looking back in total disgust with Effie in the background. And then we see Kane getting ready to wind up with a Mike Tyson hook, punch you in the face. Who the hell is he punching? And I've got two questions. Y'all don't think Effie would be bold enough to run up on them. Let's take a look at those nails and try to take that money. And then when it comes back down to Kane, do you guys think we'll ever see Kane versus 2-Bit this season? Because I kind of feel like this is a lead up to maybe next season. It's going to be a 2-bit versus Kane type of situation. Whereas they had us thinking they might would team up. And at this point in time, we know 2-bit is going to need that cash cow called Tariq. So he's not going to let nobody kill him. And we know Kane got to survive too. So who is Kane knocking out? And again, whose fingernails are those sticking up the Tejada family? Could it be that bougie chick? That's with Kane in this picture right here. Could it be her? I guess we'll find out. But leave me all your comments. Be sure to turn on those notifications when I drop videos. And that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. Comment, subscribe. Get yourself that life game. 
Follow me on Instagram. Help me get those Instagram numbers up. Be sure to check us out on our live show that we go every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. Usually it's just me and the living legend Larry, but we've got some people coming through tonight. We've got Jay Moore. We've got Sharonda from Pair of Weight. And T-Stream should be back as well. And until that next sexy as hell video, Merry Christmas and I'll see you.